Sn 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 a while back, I posted reviews to two popular PS1 games, Final Fantasy VII and Chrono Cross, to which I got questions from some of you like, hey, are you gonna do videos on PS1 role-playing games now? Unfortunately, the answer is no, I'm not. Those games are just too freaking long and time-consuming, and they eat into my time to look at other stuff. But as a compromise, I thought I'd make a video highlighting some games on other systems that, if you liked stuff like Chrono Trigger or Lufia 2 or Final Fantasy VI or Breath of Fire, you'd like these games too. Now, I wanna say right away, Way, I'm not an expert on a lot of these games. I know this is the internet and all it takes is some guy with a microphone speaking in declarative statements to make a person an expert, but I have limited exposure to stuff featured on 5th or 6th generation consoles, so then obviously this video is not meant to be a be-all, end-all, concrete representation of games. That's what the comments are for, so it's up to you guys in the comments to add what I'm missing or what stuff I'm getting wrong, alright? So in other words, do the usual. Okay, so if you loved all the Super Nintendo role-playing games I listed earlier, then the most obvious of obvious places to start would be with the Super Famicom. There are seriously over 100 role-playing games that never left Japan, and only a fraction have been fully translated by fans so far. But as it is, you can go play stuff like Front Mission Gun Hazard, Live a Live, Fire Emblem Seisen no Keifu, Seiken Densetsu 3, on and on. I've made an entire series of videos for Super Famicom role-playing games covering a lot of these, so if you haven't seen it, that'd be a decent place to start. The next obvious place would be the Super Nintendo's main counterpart, the Sega Genesis or Mega Drive, starting with Shining Force 2. I've rambled about this game in particular for a while now on this channel, the point being that the SNES never really did get a good grasp on strategy-centered RPGs, the ones that were released in the US anyway, and Shining Force 2 features an approachable style with an easier learning curve, great balance, and an upbeat soundtrack. It's one of the best games to come out in the 16-bit era, period. Some more easy choices on the Genesis are Fantasy Star 2, 3, and 4. The first game in the series is on the Sega Master System, and is decent, as long as you don't mind the insane Dragon Warrior amount of grinding you end up having to do. But if you're looking to scratch that JRPG itch with your typical throwback, visual presentation, and storytelling, then the Fantasy Star games on Genesis are definitely what you're looking for, especially Fantasy Star 4, which would easily fit into the top 5 role-playing games on the Super Nintendo because of the well-told story, the fantastic visuals, and art direction, and and the memorable soundtrack. Next, let's take a look at the Game Boy Advance, which features Golden Sun and Golden Sun The Lost Age. There's something very comfortable and familiar about these games, from the sprites, to the pacing, to the color palette, to the background designs. Both of these games would fit right in on the Super Nintendo. The story features a village of people specially attuned to magic that are tasked with protecting the world from alchemy, which is something seen as dangerous and somehow always used for evil, I guess. The combat is what you'd expect in games like this, with some minor changes here and there that make the game stand out a bit. One thing I will say is that the Golden Sun games are extremely text heavy. People just blather on and on and on. But other than that, both Golden Sun games are fun throwbacks. I have to mention Panzer Dragoon Saga, a game that a lot of people consider to be the best ever released on the Sega Saturn. It's the third game in the series, the first two games being rail shooters where you fly on a dragon and make stuff go boom, they're both super fun. Panzer Dragoon Saga though takes that same kind of gameplay and adds some RPG elements. I wish more franchises tried stuff like this nowadays. The real-time combat system is something a little different and a little more involved than most other role-playing games. The story is gigantic, spanning four discs, where you play as a mercenary named Edge, and I mean, you fly fly around on a freaking dragon fighting stuff. How much story do you need to sell you on this game? But yeah, this game is huge and it's really, really good. Easily one of the best games of the 90s. Hell, let's take a look at an N64 game. Yeah, believe it or not, they had uh, a couple role-playing games, I think. Ogre Battle 64, Person of Lordly Caliber, sticks out like a sore thumb in the N64 library, but it's a great freaking title. A sequel to Tactics Ogre, Let Us Cling Together, but the gameplay is a lot more like March of the Black Queen for Super Nintendo, but with some key changes. Like when individual units are killed here, they become much weaker zombies if you don't pay to have them resurrected. It's just an extra touch the game implements that makes the player less inclined to just brute force their way through the game and plan and manage their way through instead. Seriously, this is a great game that's easily one of the 10 best on the N64. 
Next we dive into the vast world of PlayStation role-playing games, and here's where I get a little in over my head because there's a crazy number of quality games here. Speaking from experience, I can tell you that Breath of Fire 3 is an obvious choice. I mean, besides the fact that the first two games are quality Super Nintendo titles, so if you liked those two games and it's hard not to, then you'd love Breath of Fire 3. That's not to say you have to play the first two to enjoy the third game. It's a great standalone title that's well-balanced, with a well-told story, and a solid combat system. That doesn't have many of the flaws the previous games had with the translation. I've also played Lunar Silver Star Story Complete. My old roommate from way back when had this game, and I was impressed at how freaking huge this game was without being too daunting or overwhelming. There's some good storytelling and real character development here. The closest Super Nintendo, or more accurately, Super Famicom comparison I can draw is the first Star Ocean game, as you can see here from the 2D battles with an emphasis placed on distance and movement. But even a huge game like Star Ocean is dwarfed in comparison to Lunar Silver Star Story Complete. There's also stuff I've played bits and pieces of over the years, like Grandia, Wild Arms, and Xenogears. Grandia features a unique active time battle system that really stands out among a sea of Final Fantasy and Dragon Quest clones. Wild Arms is truly something different in terms of the kind of theme and story you usually see in role-playing games, and Xenogears, well, it's kind of a combination of both of those aspects I just mentioned, and it might be the best PlayStation role-playing game out there, and that's saying something. There's also stuff I have to mention like the Suikoden series, but I confess I've hardly played any of those games outside of the second one. Finally, I want to mention a game on the Nintendo DS that would absolutely fit in with the SNES role-playing game library, and it's Radiant Historia. Seriously, if you dug stuff like Chrono Trigger, this game should be right up your alley. Its innovative take on non-linear branching storylines is really cool, and it takes something tricky like time travel and manages to keep it mostly streamlined instead of messy and convoluted, while giving the player a ton of freedom in determining what happens in the story based on your actions. Those aspects, along with the combat system, make Radiant Historia a really cleverly made game that would be well worth anyone's time. Uh, no pun intended. Alright, so there you go, and once again it's time for your favorite part of the video, to yell at me about what games I missed, and that I need to quit my job and start playing whatever other game right this second immediately or whatever. But as always, thanks for watching, and have a good rest of your day.